to the English section of the WordCamp. Um, again, my name is Maria, in case you missed it uh, last time. Um, a couple of things. We're going to have now the second talk of the day, and at 12, lunch will start. I was here yesterday, and the food is really good. So the um, we're going to have a picture with everybody, all the um, attendees, at quarter to one. So after lunch, if you go back so that we can all have your beautiful faces on the picture as well, um, we'll, we'll be announcing it again. But so just so you know, uh, it's going to be like towards the end of the lunch and before the next session that starts at one. Um, I'm blanking. I don't know if there are any other announcements that I should give. Uh, today we're joined by Floris, and I think his slides. Yes, there you go. Um, Floris Leuding. Yes. Good. Um, his talk is WordPress for Education: Experiences with Multi-Site as a Portfolio Learning Platform. Um, Floris has experience with in consulting and implementing e-learning and knowledge about management solutions in both the private and the public sector. And like many of us, he also has a strong affinity with open source software, open standards, and has over three years of experience teaching and mentoring. Um, so we're very excited to watch your talk. There's going to be, this thing is going to be interactive. So if you want to talk, if there's something like some discussions, I have a microphone that I can pass around. If you want to be in the recording, then please wait until I get to you. But, or Flores, can you repeat the question in case I'm yep. not fast enough? No problem. Okay, so please give a very warm round of applause for Flores <laughs> and you may begin. Thank you. So thank you for having me. Welcome to my uh, talk. Um, I am Flores Leuring. Um, let's see, I have to switch to my presentation. Um, as Maria said, I have experience with uh, e-learning, um, but also a strong affinity with open source software. So when I was uh, a consultant, I had to support schools uh, to select uh, learning management systems, e-learning solutions. I had to uh, provide a short list based on the program of requirements. I had to assist them in implementing them. And all the time I was thinking we are missing the uh, opportunity of utilizing the open source. So in my work, I tried to get the open source solutions, of course, on all the short lists out there. And sometimes it worked, uh, but uh, uh, more often than I would like to admit, the institutions chose for the more safe option, the closed software, the SLA, uh, something that they can uh, uh, point at and say, there's a help desk outside of our institution. We don't need to uh, bring up the knowledge inside our organization. So I quit that. Uh, I, d I did not like the way that was going, so I started uh, Portfolio.Education, also Leer Podium in the Netherlands. I am here together with my brother, uh, also partner in crime, Taco, and my wife, she is the moral support. Uh, um, so, I have my uh, presentation cut up in three parts. The first one is uh, the uh, obligatory part, so uh, you just have to accept that. It's something that I want to tell about us. I want to tell about the concept of using multi-site for education. And I want to do a short demonstration because I thought it was nice to do a live demo uh, during a talk. Then we have part two. Then you that's an ask me anything. I have prepared a l three slides. Um, it's covering the theme of didactics, technology, or the business part of our endeavor. And I didn't know what you were interested in, so I provide you with a menu and you can point at a word that you like and say, tell me more about that. If you remain quiet, then I will just pick my favorite uh, words, of course. And part three is the wrap up. So it will be a conclusion uh, at the end, five minutes and our plans for the future. So our team consists of, uh, it's multidisciplinary. We have system engineering and policy analysis experience. That's my part. Uh, that's about decision processes and complex systems, how you can uh, manage the uh, human and technological parts of this complexity. 
psychology is my brother. Uh, we have also a, a third partner. Uh, he has um, retired recently, a few years ago, I think two years. But he was uh, a teacher in the arts. He was a graphic designer. So he brought all the experience from schools. We also started uh, learning to shave with his moustache, as we say it in the Netherlands. So his school was our first moustache we learned to shave. So we had his students, we said, we have a nice idea, we have to do WordPress, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, that brought us inside the school, that, that was helpful. And he's also an artist, so that also helped us gain a lot of traction inside the uh, arts and education. Our mission is, first and foremost, let's use open technology in education. So you, it's a public um, endeavor, it's public money, it's, it's uh, open technology is the way to go in my uh, opinion. It's underutilized and it's out there for the taking and uh, you can do a, a lot with it. So then I, I translated it further to, I wanna give every student in the Netherlands, uh, in Europe or in the world, their own WordPress site. We started in the Netherlands. So every student should have their own WordPress site, but I also have in my mind the teachers, the poor teachers. If every student has their own WordPress site and that would be the learning community and platform, all these sites will look totally different. So where is the, um, for example, the vlog for the assignment for uh, the arts project, or where is the reflection for the project week? If it, the menu is on the left or it's on the right, or what you also see, it is in pink letters, on a red background because these students can do anything they want with their WordPress. So you see the craziest websites that really makes us tick. We love to see what the students do with it. Primary education, secondary education, higher education, all these kids, they just start blogging on WordPress. Um, so there's no really uh, something that is keeping them back. But we have, we cannot forget the teacher. They have to have control. And I don't mean control in a way of and um, pushing or, or, or uh, boundaries, but more like control, like monitoring, facilitating, like more like in the systems control. You have to see if you are on track, you want to um, make uh, more individual uh, learning uh, arrangements for students. That's what I mean with control for the portfolio learning. What is our strategy to, to uh, get all uh, to reach our mission? We have to be demand driven because with open source software, you can go under the hood, you can change everything. And that is the power. We go in the school, we go, we talk with the teachers, with the teams, with the departments, with the institutions, ask what their requirements are, ask what their uh, boundaries are or, or like uh, demands. Sometimes they want to have, a, uh, uh, they see challenges. Sometimes they want to take away thresholds in the, uh, in the learning process. We talk with them and we, uh, develop solutions sp tailored specifically for their learning challenges and learning problems. We also do it very modular because if you listen to all these schools and you create all these learning solutions that are tailor-made, then you end up with a big box of different solutions. What we try to do is make them modular and inter-exchangeable so that one, if school A says, we want to have a nice badge uh, achievements uh, 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 functionality, then I can say to school B, hey, do you know we, we now have a badge uh, functionality? It was uh, developed while partnering with school A, and you can also use it now if we only have to activate it. So that makes us really a partner and not a supplier. That is really our strategy. We are not a traditional supplier, but we are partnering with the uh, educational institutions. And we, we hear a lot that that helps. Our background in the, it's not that we are IT. We are not an IT uh, solutions provider. We are a WordPress agency with this uh, educational affinity in the uh, foremost. And we call this demand driven combined with modular. We call it mass customization. It's like you can um, have your sneakers designed uh, and have an idea that is customized for you, but it still comes from the, the factory. So that is the, uh, our trick to give a sense of build your own learning environment. And we, uh, our challenge is to keep that manageable. So I will. Sh um, provide a brief overview on a conceptual level of this solution. We have a mul WordPress multi-site installation. That is, uh, who doesn't know what a multi-site is? 
multi-site is you, you, you do a one magic line in your config file and it's very uh, uh, magical because once you have that line in your config you get um, a network of WordPress websites. You have your WordPress domain, for example, portfolio.education, but then you can have portfolio.education slash my portfolio student one. You can have portfolio student two, three, four. You can also have a learning portal one, learning portal two. So inside this Word WordPress multi-site, we hand out WordPress sites, vanilla WordPress. We activate 100, 200, 300 teams, depends on the uh, demands or the, 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 the depends on the choices of the institution. Some institutions say, well, let's keep it uh, low profile. You only need five teams for our uh, youngsters if they are very young, because you cannot give them a hundred teams. But if, uh, if you are in a higher education, high school, you can give them, uh, for example, 200 teams to experiment with. And then you get various WordPress websites. Every student has a way to, to show their talents, to uh, give it a look and a feel of the, to their own liking. Um, make it their own. That is our ownership in the strategy, uh, no, in the mission. So we have ownership for the students, but now we have to think about the teachers. So we create a special uh, WordPress site. We install a plugin that we created specifically to make, uh, uh, to aggregate all the activity from the separate WordPress sites from the students. And we start with a simple building block. You need a timeline, you need a feed. So when this student posts something on their timeline, it will show up in the feed, in a central place. Because you cannot ask students, peer students or teachers to go and check if there is something new to be found. No, we are all used to timelines, personalized timelines also. So if this student chooses to share something, he can say, I want to share it with a certain individual and keep it private for the rest. Or I want to share it with all the teachers inside the organization. Or I want to share it with all the teachers and the students inside the organization. That's the broadest way to share something. We see that a lot of the students, they do, the, the least they do is share it with the teachers. And if they are proud of something or they say, I like this pro end product, they share it also with the students. Uh, so here we have uh, the basic concept of a community. You have separate WordPress sites and the timeline of activity. If we go further into the learning management area as a teacher or as a teaching department, you need ways to uh, create resources, to have a library, to have manuals, or to, ha to have something like uh, um, your WordPress, uh, WordPress instructions. So it's a library of resources and you have profiles. This is a, a large, uh, uh, this is an oversight of all the uh, active learners inside the community. Then we also have projects and student records. Now we are re really uh, going to the learning management system part. Inside the projects, teachers can create tasks, they can assign those tasks, they can say, I want them to submit uh, a questionnaire. I want them to submit just a vlog. Uh, I want them to not submit something in my project. No, I want them to publish something on their portfolio, which shows up inside the project as being handed in. So the learning environment is integrated with the WordPress portfolios of the students. It can also be the other way around. You say as a teacher, I want you to hand in your vlog and I will assess it, I will use a rubric, or I will use a grading system, I will provide feedback, all these things we have developed for the teacher. But then the student can um, choose to uh, publish it from here to their own portfolio, and then it will show up again in the timeline. So in this way, we have like a learning management system that is really closed to, um, the for the purpose of interaction between the teacher, the student, and learning resources, a short, a a small workspaces, you, you can have as many as you want, and we uh, uh, and it is integrated with all these separate WordPress sites that we all love. Now I'm going to pre my prepare my live uh, demo. I have to go to my local host. Uh, I heard that it was being recorded, so I had to do. Uh, I had to make an, an anonymized um, version of one of our. Um, real-life clients. So I took the, um, how do you say it, the Film Academy in the Netherlands. They have been working with us for a long time, from the beginning, from 2014 we started and now 
they have uh, they done a lot of years with their propaduizer, uh, their first years, second years, third years. So we have a lot of data to show here. I've renamed everyone to have a German uh, famous name. So you will recognize some of them. And let's see if we go, to, well, let's start with the building blocks. I told you that there was a timeline. So in the center of the learning portal, you will see the timeline of all the blog posts that the students have published. So it's, it can be sound, it can be uh, visuals, it can be um, PDF files that we just embed inside WordPress automatically. Uh, it can be Word documents, uh, it can be anything really. This is a Word document, the other was a PDF file. Um, nice thing of this PDF, uh, it's just open source, is that you, also, you immediately get uh, ways to, um, to uh, annotate inside the PDFs. So this is also a re much requested um, functionality that we got for free with the WordPress uh, plugins. Oh, I uh, have to go here. So if I click on the, uh, the, 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 the blog post that, was, that, sh that uh, shows up in the timeline, I will, uh, a, a pop-up will show. Um, let's stay on the page. And it will display the same page but we will be on the portfolio of the student. So here you see that the student has done something uh, of uh, uh, their own um, look and feel. So f this is the timeline. The timeline shows uh, an aggregation of all the posts from the WordPress sites, and you can just pop out, go to the WordPress site, watch it, inside the context of the student's WordPress site, leave a comment and go back to the timeline if you want. We also have various widgets here. It can be widgets that show deadlines for the tasks that have been assigned to you. You can have like an announcements. It's more like an intranet. You can have uh, messages that show up that have been posted inside the projects that you are a member of. And we have the profiles here. Is that this button? And I've prepared a group of students where I want to show the proof of concept of what we achieve if we give all these students their own WordPress site. So I will open up a few in various tabs. And if we go through them, we will see that they all have their own welcome to my mind. They have their own space. It's their own place where they collect and where they uh, put their resources. They have their own look and feel. Some choose for more tiled structures. Others have more a basic um, light weight theme. And so all these students have their own online presence that they have customized. This is the portfolio of a student that has made the design of the learning management system that you see now, because we are partnering with the, the Film Academy. So we had a version one, it was really nice, but it was not nice enough. We are not designers. We are open source enthusiasts that want to throw WordPress at students. So they said, we have a student, he's a graphic designer, he can help you design the, the learning portal. So he did it for us and we implemented his design. This is also an, an example of how open you can be towards your clients. Say, if you want to have a different look and feel, send us your uh, design and we will implement it. He's now a third year, I think, or maybe fourth year already. So these are all examples of these portfolio sites. This is what makes us happy, to see that the students do a lot with their own portfolio sites. If we go inside the projects, uh, let's see. I can't see it. Oh yeah, the first one. Uh, here you can see uh, all the projects. And I will go to the projects of uh, the year uh, 2021. And I will open up, uh, for example, mm, let's take another one. This one, this is a first year project. And now we go into this building block that we uh, mentioned. This is the, the separate workspace where the teacher and the students can have interaction around learning resources. They can send messages. 
remember to, do, to bring your camera tomorrow or uh, these kind of things. Uh, this is a static description. Uh, this is like a study uh, program, a syllabus that you can create. So you can drag and drop various uh, resources, activities, tasks. You can combine those. This is called a learning arrangement. Sometimes you want to have a thematically oriented syllabus. And you want to say, we do an introduction. We have a resource that you have to watch. Then we have a, a college. And then you have a final assessment. Then we have a new theme. So you want to be able to combine resources with tasks, with activities. This is where you do it. And the students have an overview of o from A to Z uh, what is expected from them. Here you can add the students and the teachers and uh, you can manage who has access to the, uh, the, this workspace. And I will show um, a few uh, tasks. And so this was a task. This was the description of the task. You can assign it to the students. Five students have not been assigned it. Those students have all been assigned this. And if you want to assess, you can just see the students. You can open up what they have submitted. You can see that the teacher has uh, checkboxed it. So from here, you, as a teacher, you can provide the feedback, go from uh, top to bottom. And so all these assignments, you can manage it as a teacher. So this is what we mean with teacher control. You have a way to, to administer, to organize and to facilitate the learning process and also to provide individual feedback. Uh, this is an example of a group assessment, of a group uh, task. So you see that they can also work together in groups. One of the students, they uh, submit the work, but it will show up as being completed in, in, the, in the student profiles of all the teachers. Um, so if you go to the report, here you see all the tasks that have been um, designated as being important for the progress inside the project. You don't need all the tasks in the report, you, you create a selection. So as a teacher, you have uh, simplicity. You can see who is on track, you can even close the project for the participants so that uh, they have finished it. If you have done this for a long period of time, for example, uh, for many years, I'm sorry, I have to go to the uh, yeah, student files, then all the activities from the various projects will um, show up and will be aggregated inside the student file. I will also take the student that has designed it. So I'm now in the student file. Here we see all the portfolio posts of our friend, that uh, the student. We have a progress report. This is like a, f a formative, so you can see uh, but you can only see this if you have access to the student file. This is uh, important if you are a coordinator or if you are like an accreditation committee member that has to do an audit. You can provide access to a student file, though, so they can see all the activity of the student in all the projects without having to be added as a teacher to the project, because that would not be manageable. And then I can see and dive into all the things that this student has done, whether they have completed it, what they did. So it, this provides overview for the teacher. Here you see a rubric that has been uh, used for the assessment. Um, and we also have a summative file, which is more like uh, um, used for the uh, end results, like semester evaluations, or uh, did, the, did this guy get his first year or not? So I will go back to my uh, presentation. Now we go to the interactive part. Uh, how much time do you have? 20 minutes? So this is where you can ask questions. I wanted to show more like rubrics, uh, interactive timeline. Oh, I have an interactive timeline. Um, this is also just for to, for your um, to get a, a, a sense of what we do. This is the same uh, learning environment as for the film academy, but they wanted to create a timeline. So if you go to the um, open source uh, solutions, you have these things that you can utilize. Uh, this is from Knights Lab. It's uh, I don't know who's familiar with Knight Lab. This is a journalism study in the San Francisco University. They provided tools to create narratives. Um, so you can have timelines, but you can also have like pictures that you can see the before and after an earthquake. They have very nice tools for storytelling. So this is also an example that we, if someone says, hmm, I would like to have a timeline, 
we go out into the open source community, integrate the timeline, go back, we say, here's your timeline, do you like it? And then we say to the other clients, it works, you can now use the timeline. So this is the way we work. Can yes. you hear me? Uh, yeah. I can hear me. Um, it's for the recording. Okay. Maybe you already said it or, or told us um, when the students finish their studies, can they take their WordPress project yeah, with them? That is the good news because we have three ways to do that. We can, some students, they just want a static export. We created a special uh, way of... Uh, um, exporting the entire uh, WordPress site to a USB stick. I, you can do it with online crawlers. It's the way that you download an entire website. We have a second option that is the, the WordPress export. And we say, hey, you can host your own WordPress. You can use the WordPress exporter, import it again, and you can host your own. That is called the export option. But we even have a third option. This is a migration option. We have now, uh, we are now in cooperation with two high schools and they want to have uh, a separate learning community for the students that have graduated from the high schools and they want to have a new portfolio.education environment outside of the walls of the high school. We can pick up their portfolio that was inside the high school learning community. We can transport it into the uh, community where all the graduates come together and they can go on and continue with the community learning that they were used to during their uh, school. And this is something that is really, I think, important to mention that this is, um, this is a large demand, in, in, at least in the Netherlands. We, we, we see that the, the, the high school students, they go into the work field and they're on their own again. And uh, during the study, they had their peers and they had their networking, but they start working as a teacher in the arts in the school, or they start uh, as, a, as a, a, a freelance artist. But all of the, the graduates say, we need something to keep in touch, to have a shared agenda, to mobilize also in the policy field, because in the politics, it's important to have these kind of things as a group. If you are dispersed, you, you don't have uh, a lot of power, but if you know where to find each other's knowledge, and enforce each other as a community, well, then you have more power, I think. So that's the long answer to the, can they take their WordPress site with them? Not all answers will be that long. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, have you run into any legal issues that students um, posted copyrighted images or text that is not appropriate? Text is not appropriate. I, we haven't seen it. It was uh, um, a lot of schools in the lower uh, 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 ages. They were afraid of it, cyber bullying and uh, inappropriate content. Never saw. Uh, we never saw it because it's not anonymous. Um, if they do it, then you have a nice um, hook to combine it with uh, lessons in media literacy, or we call it in Dutch media wijsheid. Was that nice of you to do or not? We, we turn it around. If it happens, it's a nice uh, pedagogical um, um, hook to, say, to, 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 to take a look at it with the class and make it uh, something that you can talk about because it is um, a closed environment. We see a lot of schools, they have WhatsApp, they have Instagram, and the things that go around in these groups, there you have a lot of problems because it's not a school environment, it's just a big tech, and they, they can do whatever they want, the students, but not inside here, because everybody can see each other. Oh, and the other legal issues are also the GDPR, of course, uh, so we have a lot of uh, legal obligations, like process arrange, um, uh, contracts that we have to describe, what data we use, how we process it, um, what we will do with it, um, how long we will keep it, we also have, uh, we are now growing, so we did a European tender and we have won it. So you have also now, uh, this is really uh, uh, crazy that uh, with a business with two brothers, you can win a European tender. Uh, uh, that's not necessary to have an ISO 27001 because you have ex internal audits, external audits. We, we are with two guys in, with a lot of partnerships. So we, we did a lot of other things to comply with these kind of regulations that you can go about it creatively. Hi. Um, oh, oh, one, one more final thing. Yeah, with the course. copyright, 
Uh, we have also partnered up with a high school institution. This is Knowledge Center in the Netherlands. It's called SURF. And they have created a copyright scanning tool that integrates with all the resources that the teachers upload inside the learning environment. It will be scanned by a separate tool and it will provide the library department of the high school with high risk content. For example, if they do more than 16 pages, they can get a fine. If they do more, if they copy an entire book, it will show up in a dashboard. These are also a lot of, uh, a lot of developments in that field. Um, I've got three questions. Um, first one is, how many um, instances do you have on average on each school? I have here the statistics. This is how far we got with the two, three of us in 10 years. So we have uh, like 27 installations of WordPress. It's not really much, but inside it we have 14,000 sites. Uh, we have 30,000 accounts created all time, so from 2013. This means that there are also students that have already stopped. So, and, but inside here, we have 67 organizations. This is the building block where you have a learning portal with 10,000 active students as of this year. So at, in this year, 10,000 students are using the WordPress site learning community. And the teachers, they have created 5,000 projects. They have sent 7,000 messages, posted 8,000 resources, 27,000 learning arrangement, uh, you know, objects, and 10,000 tasks, 165,000 assignments. That's a, something where that student can submit work. And they have provided 111,000 submissions. Could be a vlog, could be a blog post. And 53,000 assessments. Oh, and in the WordPress post, we have 70,500 indexed posts in the timeline. Thank you for that. That leads me to my next question. How do you handle these huge um, databases? Backups, restorings, maybe do you do snapshots every night or do you have an individual yes. backup of every uh, installation? Yep. And how many, um, what about all these file sizes? Uh, about the? These file sizes, all yes. the web hosting. Do yeah. you do host on your own? Or, yes, or we you... host on OpenStack because it's also Thank open you. source. So OpenStack is like a cloud environment it's it's like amazon web services but it's open source and we have uh, an open stack provider in amsterdam really high quality we, we went with them in from the start you pay a little bit bit more but they are really enthusiasts and you know they 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 do it the right way you because you don't want to have a, an achilles heel in your infrastructure and then we have just the basics like a virtual private server which is crazy you don't even need a dedicated server to do to do this uh, but this is because we started small and a VPS can scale easily. So we still have VPSs, but now we are thinking about going to a dedicated server because of these large numbers. Um, we also have uh, the backups here. We do it incrementally. We use uh, a, a quite a good tool. It's called Restic. Uh, we have looked at a lot of tools, but Restic is really unique. It's very lightweight and it, it does deduplication. So you have like an incremental backup. It will only um, create snapshots of data that has been added and it will encrypt it and it will um, backup it to any backend that is you can think of. You can use FTP, WebDAV, you can use uh, your own uh, Google Drive. We use Wasabi. Wasabi is a very interesting ho um, storage provider. They provide storage for a, a, a fraction of the cost of the big names. And up till now, it's, uh, I check the, the, um, the, the backup integrity. I check it regularly because I want to be able to sleep. And up till now, it's really I can uh, really um, recommend this. Wasabi in combination with Restic. That's a really is a nice combo. Restic, R-E-S-T-I-C. Yeah. And Wasabi is just, uh, you can find it online. First you have to scroll to the sushi uh, shops, but then you find Wasabi. <laughs> um, Third-party integrations, this is where a lot of the things happen that schools already have. They have a student information system, they have a learning management system, they have an intranet, for example, SharePoint. And really, these we had a high school that had uh, hundreds of uh, portfolios in SharePoint. They had SharePoint sites for the students. You know what they asked of us? We work with Portfolio Education right now. Can you migrate all the portfolios from SharePoint to WordPress, to their own WordPress site? Well, we managed it. Why? Because 
we are in the WordPress community and we can solve everything. That is, that is, that is so cool about it. We create a cool uh, CLI uh, command. We create a few uh, things to read the uh, intranet, SharePoint, and blah, 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 everything was in the WordPress site. Uh, and this is also a very uh, important WP CLI for us. It, it's really like the, the tool on my belt. I do almost everything with WP CLI. Uh, do you have further questions? Yes, uh, we have to get in touch because I'm from Cologne. We are not so far away and we're doing quite the same things in, at the University of, ah. um, of Applied Science in, in Cologne, also with uh, WordPress uh, multi-site. Great. And uh, we have similar questions. Uh, one of it was that um, we have also we are also in a design school. It's, we have also oh. a film school who is using it. It's really quite similar. It's, yeah. uh, but we are in the university. We are not an agency. We are a project team in a university. Yeah, that's the perfect uh, way to do yeah, it. Yeah, and they, they should do it sometimes, more. not always. But and it's incredible that you are doing this like us for years and we don't know anything yeah but that is also is, why we are here we, we have been yeah. doing this for 10 years yeah. and uh, this is also therapeutic for us to i i, I saw WordCamp. i thought let's let's send an email yeah. to to get it off my chest that we have been doing this for 10 years yeah. and we have to go outside more often because yeah. it's a lot of work yeah and it's, it's great it, we have to get in touch and you have to come uh, to cologne or we have to come to you in uh, in the netherlands but um and it's really interesting because we're using it for design also mm -hmm. for the design school we started in a design school and we have project-based learning and um, oh, yeah. learning management systems are not so um, um, good at this to mm -hmm. provide project-based learning and we decided not to use themes that every student could um, mm -hmm. have it's uh, his or she or um, their own theme because because we are a really small team and it's uh, you have to update the yeah. themes do you use one theme that they can um no we put, we give them uh, a lot of themes we discuss it with the with the institution some say five themes is enough some say we want to have the full monty mm -hmm. but this is a challenge for us because we just go to the theme themes.org or how do you say it the wordpress.org directory and we have a curated list of themes that we trust Themes okay. that have been updated regularly, uh, themes that um, look good and uh, don't have a lot of premium features. Mm. So we have our own list of WordPress themes, but sometimes a theme is obsolete. So then we have to throw it out and mm. tell the student, oh, you have to work with a different team. So but it's the, difficult, but yeah. we, we, we want to give that. How do you manage this? To Because also if you update a theme, there are always problems. Yeah, the, we have never had problems. No. no, no. I just hit the update button. Uh, I, I do it outside office hours, and I say uh, with the WP CLI, uh, with a cron. This is also very important to WP CLI combined with cron. It's really amazing because you can just with the two of us, you can do, you can automate anything that you want. So I just say update all the themes, and if there, we also s tell them that we work with open source. So if there is an issue get on, uh, uh, create a ticket, and we will solve it. Mm. But that's interesting that you say it. With themes, we never had any issues. Yeah. No, never. And we have hundreds of them. Yeah, we decided against the themes because we thought if there is something different then, and they look differently after you update the themes, then you have always support uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, questions. And we are only also a really small theme, yes. um, a team, two, three people with students. And so we said, no, it's one theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I found it's a really interesting idea to have um, a, a block um, who collects where you collect everything. And yeah. this is the, the other question. How do you do it technically? Um, how to connect the portfolio mm -hmm. to the block? Do they have to become authors or do they have to join the course? Yeah, we connect the WordPress site of the student to the organization. So that is the uh, the building block here. So yeah. this this WordPress site has to be connected with this organization. Inside the network, you can have like 30 organizations because in a high school, you have 30 programs. Yeah. So if this student uh, follows like uh, graphic design, they are connected to the organization of graphic design. A different student can be connected to comic design or to the acting uh, school. Yeah. And this is just a setting here as a blog option. 
and we have our own uh, plugin and this is why WordPress is so amazing you have all these hooks and these actions so all the activity that goes on inside the network can hook into your plugin and you can say hey a student posted a blog post let's create an index post we call it so something that shows up in the timeline mm. but populated with the post content that originated here but you don't have to copy the media so if a student uploads a big uh, uh, media file here it will show up here at, in the html content it will show the, the um, it will serve the media from the source blog post mm. so it's really like an index and you have um, plugins that do this also multi-site plugins that say index all your posts so you can search through the network we used it we looked at it but that is also our challenge if you start getting better at wordpress and utilizing the force more and more plugins you just throw away because with a few lines you can do the same as with a separate plugin so so you have only one one central block i would call it block this um the organizer's block yeah for a study program not yes. for a course no, because the courses, they are inside the organization. But this is interesting that you mention it. There's also like uh, different arrangements uh, possible. And this is the educational challenge. So you have, for example, a graphic design organization with courses, graphic design mm. with the teachers. Mm. But you can also have graphic design, comic design, and uh, for example, uh, something else, uh, media design. But you can have a, a fourth organization where you put these three organizations, all the students together in a community that goes about, the, about design. Mm -hmm. So now we have also on a high school, uh, one central organization. All the students go in there. We have academy level organizations. So then you can have academy wide announcements, for example, or mm -hmm. academy wide, I'm looking for a bass player mm -hmm. kind of things. And you have uh, more study program oriented organizations. So you can play with this uh, arrangement. Thank you very much. We have to talk after. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I have a question related to the infrastructure. Do you use any containeriz containerization tools like Docker or even Kubernetes? Um, I used to do uh, open projects on Docker. Open project is, by the way, the, the best. It's a German uh, open source project. We looked at ways to, to, to manage all this complexity. Open project is really uh, incredible to work with. So open project, we ran it in a, in a Docker system, but eventually we just created a, a dedicated uh, virtual server for it and ran it through the package. Uh, but a lot of things, Docker is very powerful. You can just uh, experiment easily with, to with tools through docker but if you start using it more in a production environment sometimes you just make other choices okay thanks you're welcome Thank you. uh, i have a question about performance and themes which are dependent on plugins you need to provide mm -hmm. are there some concerns or like yes. some rules that we mm -hmm. shouldn't use too much to there so are concerns, everything? yes. Um, well, it's a big concern and we'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> so, I mean, what we, met, what we got, it was really weird. It's something that you learned that there was a, a theme and a student saw an admin notice and they said, hey, install this plugin that goes with this uh, theme. And it was really crazy, but there was a theme that allowed, without a permission check, for the student to install it through the team installer, this plugin. So we really were uh, pissed. You know, these are the things, this is the risk, but it never, in 10 years, it never uh, created big problems. But I have to admit, you have to be risk uh, uh, tolerant to do this work. Uh, so w we just hide the admin notices. We, we said, you cannot do this if you're a student. If you want it, maybe we will do it, reach out to us, but we, we don't like to sell no. So if a student says, I need this plugin, tell us, why not? We, we scan the, the plugin, maybe we install it. Okay, so basically uh, they need to uh, give you a good reason to yes. install it. Okay. Yeah. But we like to keep the students as far away from our help desk. So we make, 
we, we make an agreement that the students help each other, they use Google, because that's also uh, the case. WordPress is, is not ours, it's, it's everybody's, and it's really well documented. So if we say uh, Google it, they really find solutions for everything. And you also see that if a student has a lot of problems with a the theme, they don't get mad at us, they get mad at the theme, and they just say, this is not a fine, good theme, I would take the other theme that my fellow student says, this one is very easy to work with. So that way it, it works out. Thank you very much. It's a different mentality towards using technology. You make them the owner, and if they start complaining, we, we, you have a constructivist approach, say, let's solve it together. So, um, conclusion, WordPress is a content management system, um, but if you do a multi-site, it's a community management system. This is something that, th this is the way we look at WordPress. It makes, this makes this very powerful multi-site. WordPress as a portfolio works for students for all the levels. That is something that we see. And WordPress as a platform works for schools and institutions. They can think about anything. They can say, can we narrow cast some content from your uh, le learning network to our monitors in the, in the building? But we want to have separate posts in the teacher room than the cafeteria room. No problem, we can do it. This is the platform thinking. You can connect everything to it. The plans for the future are refactoring because we are now for the second version uh, with the redesign, but now we want to, we have created our own plugin. We, we never got to it to open source it. And this is practice what you preach. So what we're going to do is refactor it enough that we dare to show our code. <laughs> <laughs> it's now really object oriented. And, and this guy, he does things with, with patterns, anti-patterns, a singular and abstract. And some, some, the one is an anti-pattern, the other thing is something you really want. Uh, decorating objects, th th we will do that here. We already started it. Then we go open source, so everybody can use it. And we want to do the community building, and that is why we are here. We want to go out from our computers and go back uh, to, to go into with the, with the good news. Well, this was my uh, talk. We feel like uh, David and Goliath sometimes. We have kicked out a lot of big tech from the education institutions. Uh, schools, schools started working with uh, Microsoft for Education, for example. But now complete departments, they just don't work in it anymore because they say that WordPress, yeah, that is really flexible. So I hope together we can uh, be an army of uh, Davids. <laughs>